Good morning, Bridge Church. My name is Derek. And I'm Jess, and we're so thankful that you chose to spend some time with us today. Um, for those of you that missed our 10 a.m. celebration, it's okay. We understand summer's busy, um, kids have activities and sports, um, but don't worry, we haven't forgot about you. What have you got, Dee? Absolutely, we got y'all. So very shortly, we actually have some videos that we'd like to share with you all. We got a, a great worship set so you all can get your worship on. We have a, a little bit of a moment for giving, and then we also have an incredible message that Pastor Rob actually spoke this morning for you all to enjoy as well. Speaking of giving, Jess, what are some ways that our church family can give? Great question. There's two different ways. You can text GIVE to 402-809-4008, or you can visit our website at bridgeomaha.org. It's safe and secure. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. Now, without further ado, we won't hold you all any longer. Please enjoy these sets we have for you. you guys, have a great day. Have a good one.
Well, hey, if you're new here, um, you've caught us in week two of a series called More Than a Hashtag. Somebody say that. More, More than, than a hashtag. More than a hashtag. And uh, we actually switched up our summer plans. You know, we had actually a really exciting summer. We were going to do this competition. We are going to have all these fun things going on. But with everything that's going on in our country, in our city, involving racial just injustice and, and reconciliation, we said, you know what, we're going to continue to lean into the topic. We're not going to shy away from it. We feel like it's that important. And at Bridge Church, we said, you know what, we have a responsibility. Being one of the more diverse uh, churches in the city, we said, no, we got to do something about this. So I hope that you're not getting tired of it. Uh, I know I'm not getting tired of it, uh, but we're going to continue our series. So thank you again for tuning in. This week, this week, we're going to be talking about mercy. Somebody say mercy. 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 Have you ever experienced mercy before? Amen. Have you experienced the gift of mercy? Yes. I know I have. And we're going to dive into that a little bit today. All right. So before we get started, we jump into the word. I just want to go to the, to the Lord in a word of prayer to set us up for the receiving of his word. Can we do that? Awesome. Well, God, just thank you so much for this time. God, even now, we choose to quiet our hearts, our minds, try to avoid every distraction, and we want to hear clearly from, from the word of God today. What do you have to say about mercy? And what do you require us? Because you tell us to love mercy. That's what you tell us to do. So God, I just know with everything that's going on, man, our hearts, I mean, they're, they're troubled. Our hearts are confused. But God, we want to listen to this morning. So open the eyes of our hearts this morning, Lord. We want to see you. We want to hear from you. We want to know you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, um, you know, there's a real popular passage of scripture when it comes to social justice. And it's one that you see a lot on T-shirts. You see it on coffee mugs. You see it in the faith community and even the non-faith community. Because they're saying, hey, this is important to us. And this is what your Bible says how you should be acting. And sometimes I'm just saying, I see a little bit of compromise. And with this particular generation, when it comes to social injustice, they are looking for it. They are leaning in. And if we do not, we do not talk about it in the church, if we do not give them a solution, we're going to lose the next generation. We're going to lose them. This generation right now, when it comes to diversity and inclusion, equality, these are big deals to this generation. And guess what? They're big deals to God as well. But I think overall as a church, we just, uh, we shied away from it. We've shied away from it. And we're going to do our very best to continue to grow together. But the scripture, the scripture that, 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 that many of us know, a very familiar scripture, is found in the book of Micah. It's in the Old Testament. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Here's what it says. Know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right. In other words, to live justly. To love mercy. And to walk humbly with your God. And I just feel like it's important for us to understand what does that even mean? Like, for real, for real. Because it sounds good, but how many of y'all know that's really hard to apply? When we don't have the full spectrum and we don't have the full perspective. So here's what I would just like to 
propose to you this morning. When I think about this particular scripture and, 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 and who Micah was and who was he talking to, I truly believe there's a lot of parallels of where we're at today. So many of the same situations. You see, Michael was a prophet. He was a prophet, and a prophet is someone who spoke on the behalf of God. And he went to the people of Israel, God's chosen people. If you remember, God had made a covenant with these people. And, 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 and they were supposed to be set apart as a holy nation. And guess what happened? They started going back to their old ways. There was a lot of injustice that was going on. And, and for 500 years, 500 years, could you imagine? 500 years. Now here Micah comes in and he's getting ready to, to share, thus says the Lord. That he was actually going to, it was a word of judgment over the people because of their disobedience. Again, there was some systemic issues. The rich were getting richer. The poor were getting poor. The people of God were supposed to get along, but the reality, there was so much more division and divide because of preferences. And Micah says this. This is what he says. He says, this is what you need to do to live justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. You know what? Here's the question. Here's the question that I believe that we should be asking during this time. What does the Lord require of me? What does the Lord require of me? And how many of y'all know that question can get very, very cloudy? And that's what's going on right now. With everything that's going on, that question is not even in the back of our minds because we're so quick to want to be heard. We're so quick to give an opinion. Our politics has gotten in the way of our faith. And it's cloudy. It's cloudy. I search social media. I see what's going on. So much built up frustration. So much pain, so much trauma. And then you got another side where it's just like, man, God is just awakening the church. And then you got these two sides. How many of y'all know the enemy wants to divide us? And that's what he was doing at their time, trying to divide. So Micah is speaking, and this is what, this is, this is, this is what they said. Well, maybe, what if we just gave a little bit more? What if we sacrificed all of our different animals? What if we just used, yes, I know we've oppressed the poor. We've used our wealth and stuff to take advantage of people. But what if, what if we just gave and be able to justify their actions? And what Michael says, you're missing the point. You're missing the point. There's actually nothing that you can do. I mean, I hear your heart. I hear what you're trying to say. Similar to what's going on. So many people are asking, what do I do? How can I help? How can I be a part of the solution? And that's a great question. And can I say, Bridge Church, we've done a really good job of asking that question and taking next steps. But what Michael was making it clear to the people, it was like, it's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. This is not something that you can sacrifice. He's saying obedience is better than sacrifice. And at the end of the day, only God can change a heart. Only God can change a heart. Where is your loyalty? How do you see the world? I remember the first time I spoke to some athletes, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I remember I was in Tennessee. They asked me to come and speak to a whole group. There was a few hundred athletes. And I remember the Lord had put on my heart to ask him this question. Are you an athlete? 
that happens to be a Christian? Or are you a Christian athlete? That's a deep question. That's a deep question. Right now, are you an American before you're a Christian? Are you white? Are you black before you're a Christian? Are you Democrat? Are you Republican before you're a Christian? This is the tension. Our politics has gotten in the way. And God is saying it's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the church to wake up. Put our preferences to the side, acknowledging, acknowledging our own biases and our own preferences. And just like Michael was saying to the people, man, it's not enough just to sacrifice more. What he actually wants is your heart. What he wants is your heart. And that's a little bit more complicated because it's a little bit deeper. Again, this was 500 years of disobedience. 500 years. You think about what's going on in our country. 400 years. This was an awakening that God was trying to do. So I think it's important for us when it comes to justice. This was the plea. He's like, this is what you need to do. He's like, you need to live justly. You know what's right. You need to be somebody who's full of full, and fights for justice. You need to love mercy, and you need to walk humbly. So before we get into just a couple things that I just feel like um, I just want to share, I do think it's important to get uh, just a, 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 a working definition. Because justice, mercy, grace, they can all kind of get tied up, and we don't even know what the difference is. All right, so y'all with me? Are y'all with me a little bit in here? Yeah. Okay, so the first one is justice. What is justice? What is it? Next week, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more. Actually, in two weeks. But what is justice? Justice is simply getting what you deserve. Getting what you deserve. Eye for an eye. That's what people are claiming for. We want justice. Amen? Amen. We want justice. What is mercy? Mercy. Not getting what you deserve. It's actually like God withholding the punishment for disobeying him. Like not getting what you deserve. And then grace, the word that we love so much, is getting what we don't deserve. I made this illustration um, uh, maybe last year sometime. But I just want us to feel the weight of it. Because when we talk about loving mercy, we got to understand what we actually deserved. You see, imagine, go on a journey with me. I'm, I'm driving. Matter of fact, I'm riding my motorcycle. I got my man Nick Push Dalton over here. I got Bryce, my better together bike club. All right, so imagine with me for a second. We're riding our motorcycle and we going 80 in a 60. That's never happened, by the way. But imagine we're going 80 in a 60. And the cops pull us over. What is justice? Justice is basically saying the cop, I, I'm sorry, here's your ticket, here's your fine. Man, you need to be more careful. But this is what you deserve. You broke the law, here's the consequences. You feel me? If you feel me, can I just say I feel you? Okay. What is grace? Let's just go to grace. Let's just go to grace. Now, nah. I'm going to go to mercy because, because, because I, I'm going to go to mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is this cop pulls us over. He comes and talks to us. And he says, man, he shakes his head. He actually has a little bit of compassion. And he knows like this ticket could have cost me everything. Maybe could have cost me a reputation. Maybe cost me my job. So the cop looks at me. And he says, I need you to hear me now. I'm going to let you go. But I need you. Just please don't do it again. Don't do it again. This is what you deserve. But don't do it again. And Grace, 
as this cop pulls us over. And he says, man, I like your bikes. I want you to go up to the next exit. I want to fill up your tank. I want to give you a detail. And I want to give you $100 and be on your way. That's grace. Do you see the difference? Grace is getting what we don't deserve. And how many of y'all know we are saved by grace? Mercy is a little bit more weighty. It's weighty. Because we live in a culture in a world where there's a lot of sloppy grace. God, forgive me in advance because I know, I know you're full of grace. Forgive me in advance. I know I'm about to do dirt. I'm going to do it anyway. Forgive me. I'm just going to receive your grace. But mercy? And when we really experience mercy, mercy can change things. Not to say grace can't change things. But mercy is a little bit more weighty. So the word says we need to act justly, but we need to love mercy. Love mercy. So the question that was asked is what does God require of me? So the first thing I would just propose to you in light of what God has done, it requires change. To love mercy requires change. Again, I said that what Micah said is like, man, this, your sacrifice is not good enough. Even though I feel you. But what needs to change is your heart. It needs to change your heart. Your, your heart needs to change. And not just your heart, your mind. The way that you think about people. The way that you think about even some of the realities that we're facing. It needs to change. There needs to be a shift. And then that should lead to change in an action. A change in actually doing something, standing up for those who are not treated justly. Standing up for those who have not been extended mercy. That's what it means. It requires a change. And Bridge Church, man, I'm just so humbled and I'm so proud because we have a church that says, you know what? You can belong here before you believe. And wherever you're at in this journey, just know that you can come. And, and, and I believe God will provide a safe place. He said, you know what? I, I want my heart to change. I want my heart to change because I see the injustice and it just, I just stay here in my head. And I get very logical and cynical in my head. And I try to reason and reason and reason. I've had I don't know how many conversations with people trying to justify their beliefs mm -hmm. during a time like this. And it's hard to get to their heart. That's what he's saying. If you want to love mercy, it requires change. The second thing that loving mercy requires it requires accountability. And this is a word that we don't like. We don't like because we want to run and do life on our own terms. We don't want to feel like we need an answer to anybody. But I ask the question, have you ever extended mercy? Have you been a recipient of mercy? Wives and husbands, like for real? Like you know you guys should be split there's no way, there's absolutely no way that y'all should be together because of certain, certain actions, but one or the other decides to show mercy. Have you ever been there? Kids, schools, get caught doing something, hanging out with the wrong crowd, did something you weren't supposed to do, you get caught, and if someone extended mercy, have you been there? Have you been there? When you know you did not deserve forgiveness, but someone decide, you know what, I'm going to forgive you anyway. Have you been there? Have you been there? I was talking to a friend who relapsed recently. Just relapsed and just beating himself up, so much shame. But he, he, he 
received the mercy of God. It gives him a little bit of hope. You see, mercy requires some accountability because without mercy, we just keep going on, just life is normal. I'll do me, I'll go check in the church, I mean, I'll go, I'll go on one of my Zoom groups, I might attend a Bible study, but the reality, it's like, it's like, there's really not much accountability. And here's the deal, the accountability has to first be personal. It has to be personal. But here's where I feel like we've done a disservice to the church, especially here in America. We've made it so personal that if it wasn't my fault or if I didn't do this or if I'm not the racist or if I'm not this or if I'm not that, then it's not my problem. That's how we approach our faith sometimes. As long as me and God are cool, I really don't have to be held accountable. I don't need to hold anybody else accountable. I just got to be cool right here. It's personal. And yes, we need to look first within. I've said this. I said COVID is the great revealer. Now everything that's been going on the last few weeks, the great revealer of what's really going on in our souls. Like where do we really stand? But accountability has to extend just beyond personal. If we as a church, as a church in America, when we talk about justice and we talk about mercy, we have to be accountable for other people's actions as well. And that's what Michael was saying. Because the rich man, he said, what if I just gave more? What if I sacrificed this? He actually said, what if I just sacrificed my son for all the dirt that I've done? And Michael said, you're missing the point. It's deeper than that. And again, Bridge Church, we're going to continue to lean into justice. The, just, the gospel is, 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 is holistic. Justice must be a part of the gospel. And we're going to fight until everybody gets justice. But it says, no, we got to go a step further. We got to love mercy. That's a little deeper. That one cost something. That was tough actually extend mercy to one another? How do we even do that? And we'll get to that at the end. But we gotta be held accountable. It's gotta extend beyond personal. You know, <laughs> I wasn't gonna share this story, but my friend Colin just, uh, he's here, and he, he reminded me of this story. So I gotta tell you kind of a funny story. So, this past week, man, um, I was playing pickleball with some of my brothers. I had to extend some mercy. And uh, that was cool, man. I'll be honest with you. I'm not really that close to them. Cool guys. And, and we played. And afterwards, man, I really wasn't feeling that well. And I was, when I tell you I was parched, I was so thirsty. I felt like I was about to faint. Like I needed some water. So this brother says, man, I got something for you. And I just need you to know this. I didn't become a Christian until I was 24 years old, but I've never drank before. I just had zero desire to consume any alcohol. And it was really because I was an athlete and I never saw my dad do it. Never. All my friends, I was like, nah, I'm cool. I, I just don't need it. I don't need it. And I felt like if I just didn't do this, that might help me get ahead. And I just kept this streak for 40 years. You guys know where I'm about to get at. <laughs> 40 years I've never had a drink. And maybe there was a sense of pride to it, but I don't know. And I'm not like, I'm, like, I'm not opposed to like drinking. Like, people want to drink, that's fine, you know. I, but, but, but for me personally, I just never had no desire. So this brother pulls out. I'm getting ready to go to the gas station. And, and, and my wife, she's got me drinking LaCroix and Bubbly. And I just thought they're all the same thing. So this brother says, man, hey, I got me a white claw. I said, white claw, okay. 
Some of y'all, some of y'all know what a white claw is. I never heard of a white claw. But I looked at it and it just said seltzer. I said, oh, this must just be one of the same things that I just have to drink. So I'm thirsty. So then, man, and you know me, I drink pretty fast. I said, white claw. So I, I, I read it and it seemed cool. And I'm talking about I chugged it. It was like the size of a Red Bull can. <laughs> and then a couple minutes later, I started feeling a little funny. <laughs> and then I look at the fine print. It said 5% alcohol. <laughs> I, w I wanted to fight him, but at the same time, I felt like I had to extend some mercy. <laughs> so my streak is over. Um, but pray for me. Hey, I was praying all the way home. I was riding my motorcycle. I said, please, God, don't let me get pulled over. Please, God, don't let me get pulled over. Uh, but, yeah, that was just last week, man. And uh, I just wanted to confess that to you all. Um, again, not drinking doesn't make me any better. It was just a personal decision. But my streak is broke after 40 years. Tough. I know you're feeling me. Pray for your boy. Pray for your boy. But number one, to love mercy requires change. Number two, it requires accountability. And finally, it requires proper worship. You said, that's interesting. What do you mean? What do you mean? Romans 12, and then I'm going to close here in a minute. It says this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. See, yes, it does require a change in heart and mind and thinking standing up for injustice. It does require accountability, personal, personal and corporate accountability. But as Christians, as followers of Christ, for those who say, you know what, I put my faith and trust in Jesus and I'm allowing him to lead my life. I'm going to allow him to lead. I'm going to view, it said, in view of God's mercy, when we think about what he did for us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, does that mean going to the altar? No. But what that means is every single day saying, God, because of what you've done for me, in view of your mercy, when I think about what I have done, when I think about the judgment that I deserve, because you lavish your mercy and your grace on me. The reasonable response is to say, I offer you my body as a living sacrifice. Do with it as you please. Help me filter my life through the cross, not through the color of my skin, not through my politics, not through the allegiance that I have to my country, but my allegiance that I have to you. That I'm a Christian first. I'm a Christian first. And I need to continue to allow God to change me need to be held accountable and I need to offer him proper worship. See, God has called us to live justly. He's called us to love mercy. He's taught us to walk humbly. So as we close, I want to read another scripture. And then we're going to sing some songs together as you reflect on 
the word. And here it is. Again, James. James says this. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. So it says, if you judge somebody for whatever, then I won't extend my mercy to you. But he says, mercy triumphs over judgment. So Bridge fan, here we are. We're not going to shy away from this topic. We're going to continue to talk about it, have conversation. And we're also going to ask and take action. So here's my last two thoughts. Number one, have you ever received God's mercy? Like, for real, for real. Have you received his mercy? Because that's the only way that we're able to extend this mercy towards somebody else. As we have first received it. Similar to forgiveness. Once we realize how much we've been forgiven, then we'll be able to forgive those. And here's the next question. And this one is going to cost you something. Are there people that you need to extend compassion and mercy to right now? Right now. Are there anybody? Are there anybody? God's called us to live justly. He's called us to love mercy. He's called us to walk humbly. So we're going to sing a few songs and I, my prayer is that you would consider those questions and take action. God, we love you. God, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, I pray that we would ask our the same question that Micah had proposed. What does God require of me? Of me, right now. Right now. Are there things in our hearts, in our minds that need, we need to change? God, we, we give you permission to search it. God, are there things in our life where we've just kind of walk with like sloppy grace, like no accountability, just kind of going and going and going. God, personal or even corporate, God, I pray that you would move us toward that. And God, I pray as a reasonable response for what you've done for us, that we would offer our bodies as a living sacrifice in view of your mercy. God, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name.